Barlow World out with full year results today. Yes. Headline earnings per share, or diluted headline earnings per share, down 65% mm. for the company. But their order book is looking a little more optimistic going forward. That was yes. the terminology that management used. Yeah, they had a very tough year. Obviously, it's a cyclical company um, with the recession last year and equipment making up a big part of their business. Um, they had a tough year, down headline earnings per share, down 40%, which was in line with guidance as expected. The second half of the year was better, though. Um, their order book is picking up at the moment with um, the commodity-led recovery taking traction at the moment. Um, we are beginning to see the order book fill up. Uh, construction, though, is still, after the World Cup, construction is still dampening the order book a bit, and they see that picking up. In Looking the at the result today, the market likes it. We're up 10% on Barlow World, 55 around 26. The last I looked, yeah, they're, up, they're the top performing share today. Um, so the Is market it just because like of that it. optimism uh, in terms of the I order think, book going forward? Yes, I think so. Um, this is obviously saying that investors look at what's going to happen going forward over the next year. Um, they are very optimistic. They say the order book is filling up a lot. Um, and the caterpillar population in South Africa has um, increased about 100% over the last five years. So there is still that after sales, the servicing parts, that sort of thing coming into it as well. So looking forward, it is very optimistic. And I think that's where you've seen that big upside coming today. Would you still buy at these levels despite no. the 10% rally today? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Not no. no we a little too rich now. For a value in investor, it's a bit rich at the moment. It trades on a P of about 25, which is very expensive. Um, dividend yield is quite low at about 1.5%. Um, so it's not saying that a value investor will be looking at. Roynet also reporting full year results mm. and diluted headline earnings per share falling 22% for that company. The stock today at 64 and 30, it's done just a third of a percent, pretty much in line with the broader JSC yeah. all share. Roynet's a company that we've held for about three or four years, not across the board, but in a few of our portfolios. Um, it's a high quality business. We believe it should be trading at a premium. It's been unloved by the market for some years now. Um, if you look at return on equity, it's in excess of 20%. Um, that's not abnormal for this company. It's been like that for many years. Um, so it's very high, high quality. If we, l we look at um, a fund, what we call a fundamental score, which looks at the efficiency, profitability of a company, um, balance sheet strength, that sort of thing. And we score a company out of nine. At the moment, it scores nine out of nine, which is very um, what is going to unlock the value in the share price? What is the kicker that you're looking for? <sighs> At the moment, we, we're not too sure. Um, this, is, this company is unloved. It's trading on a PE of around 10. Um, dividend yield plays a very hard um, dividend pay at about 4.5% dividend yield. We're waiting for this, this kicker. Um, at the moment, we're not sure where it's coming you're from. You're not concerned but with the results that you saw We're not concerned. Today. These results, if you normalize them and um, take out the option that they've got on Nokia, the headline earnings per share were up about 3%. Um, there's nothing wrong with these results. There's nothing wrong with this, this company. At some point, it will start um, to kick up. And SPA, one more of the retailers. That's on the back of the retail numbers coming out mm. today, 6.1% increase for September. Better than the market was expected, but SPA diluted headline earnings per share rallying 19% for the period. And also revenue up 9%. Yeah. So, so not a bad performance on SPA. The stock at 98 rand 90, pretty much flat on, on the day. Yeah, um, the results were as expected. Um, these companies, these food retailers, have done really well this year um, from an investment point of view. You look at pick and pay. Well, not really pick and pay, but um, ShopRite, more importantly, is up about 60%. I think SPA is up about 50%. Pick and pay has lagged somewhat. So they have done really well. These results were, as I said, they were expected. Um, headline earnings per share, if you strip out the BE charge from last year, up about 12%. These are story stocks. Um, growth investors love them. Moving into Africa, not ne necessarily SPA. Um, but pick and pay well, let's look price. at valuation on SPA. It's rallied 39% year to date, whereas the broader JSE all share is up 13 to, to 15%. Yeah. So way outperforming These, the market on this front. They are. They're looking very, very expensive, all of them. Um, it trades at a PE of about 19, but more importantly, we look at what you call a Graham and Dodd PE ratio, which normalizes your earnings over seven years and inflates them to today's prices, as opposed to just looking at 12-month earnings. And um, if you look at it that way, they trade on a PE of about 37 Historically, um, companies should trade around 17 times. So it's very, very expensive at the moment. Standard Bank says that the staff rationalization costs are going to save the company 2.3 billion rand. Initially, the numbers on the table were around about 1 billion to 700 million rand. Uh, that's obviously in an attempt to boost return on equity. Yeah. What do you make of the rationalization at this point in the cycle? 
Um, they're late to market. I, I've asked so many market commentators this point. They're late to market. And yeah. secondly, a lot of their strategy is a pullback from Africa, which is why Standard Bank has always traded at a premium to the other banks. Exactly. Um, I, I agree with you to, um, 100% there. Um, they are a bit late to market. Standard Bank isn't a company that we hold. Um, they're expecting one in a but, uh, billion savings. They're looking at now two. So they've probably cut a few Deep. too many a few too many jobs and that's hence the outcry that we saw a few weeks ago when they did so. Standard Bank, as I said, it looks, the banks in general look fairly cheap to us. Standard Bank isn't one that we hold at the moment. Um, it has gone into Africa now. It's pulling out of Africa surprisingly whilst a bank that we like, Nedbank, is actually pushing into, into Africa. Um, we believe Nedbank's been unloved purely because of that reason, not going in, into Africa. So it is surprising to see Standard Bank pull out now. I know um, this is more sen sentiment, and I'm not expecting you to have the answers yeah. on the front. But again, you know, the, the decision to cut came very quickly, and according to a number of staff in the Standard Bank Group, it was not at all expected. So it's almost as though management has seen something in the pipeline yeah. that caused them to react so violently. No, exactly. I can tell you from personal experience, a friend of mine um, got retrenched from Standard Bank, and he didn't see it coming at all. This was a sudden movement. Um, why they did it? It remains to be, s be seen, or why they did it so s severely when they, I think they, they could have gone about it in a better way. Andrew, how do value managers, specifically Canon asset managers, feel about the valuations on the market at the moment? Is there still value to be had? Are there some stocks that you can pick up? Um, yes, there is. Um, if you look at the market in general at the moment, um, it trades on a P of about 17. This looks a bit expensive or a bit on the, the expensive side. If you, again, use the Graham and Dodd P ratio, it's fairly valued. So, yes, the market is there or thereabouts. It's not cheap. It's not expensive. Um, but there's definitely opportunities within the market. Um, for some time now, we thought resources have been overpriced. They're starting to come back now. We've seen over the year, I think, resources have under, um, underperformed financials and industrials by about 15 to 20 percent. So resources now are beginning to look more attractive than industrials per se. Financials, we are still seeing quite a bit of value there, especially, I've just said, in the banks, in Nedbank. And then um, within industrials, the construction sector, as you know, we've liked it for some time. We still do. Um, hopefully one day the government will start s spending um, a bit of Remind money. Remind me of your pick in that sector. It's group Avenge and Group Avenge 5. And group five. Those are two picks there. Um, but the whole sector there looks looks fairly cheap. Um, Wilson Bailey Homes um, is, is a case in point. Time as, to go as in well. now, in your view. Um, time to go in. I don't know <laughs> when is the right time to go in. I'm not, not too sure. Not that you try and, and uh, not time the market. Not that you try and time the I mean market. You, you pick if your value stocks. If you're a long-term investor and you've got time on your hands, um, definitely you can go and hold those companies. Um, Avenge Group 5 in particular, and if you've got the, the time in your hands, they will reward you in the long run.